Welcome to Reformation and Revival Now. You know, a lot of times I talk to people and I try to tell them that there's really, there really isn't nothing new under the sun. Most of the things that are being done have already been done in some form or another. Everybody wants to feel that their situation is unique. Everybody wants to feel that their situation is different. Oh, you just don't understand what I'm going through. Well, you know what? One thing is true. Everybody is unique and everybody is special. But when you get about seven to eight billion people around the planet, let me share it with you. Yeah, we're all unique, but we all have some basic needs. Okay. Everybody wants purpose. Everybody needs belonging. Everybody needs family. Everybody needs to be understood. Everybody wants a place. There's just certain things that are just universal. So don't think that you are so unique that you are beyond the human experience. Everybody, if you're flesh and blood, if you, if you live in this body, you're going to have certain needs. You're going to have certain emotional needs. You're going to have certain physical needs. And you know, this is very important for us to understand because we need to stop thinking we're so different from each other when we really have much more in common than we ever give ourselves credit for. Um, some people get into certain lifestyles, um, certain trends. Uh, some people are, are so motivated by greed, they will even put away what they know to be true but because of greed, they'll maintain it. This is the one of the things that our founding fathers did at the beginning of our country. Most of them renounced slavery. They disagreed with it. And uh, many of them set their slaves free upon their death. I know General Washington, General Washington did. But because they did not condemn it, it has been a seed against our nation for years of racial prejudice. If you look at the division of our nation today, you can trace it back to the original divides that, that were there in the beginning of this nation. And one of them, of course, not just a political divide, but the whole thing of slavery. To make slavery work in America, and of course in Britain too, we have to go ahead and change the landscape. I'm gonna make an African person I'm going to make them a less of a person. I'm going to say to you, this is how witchcraft works, guys. I'm going to say to you that this person is not really a whole person. It's not really a complete being or he's a lesser being. So the fact that he's slavery, that's all he can. He's a slave. That's all he can aspire to. This is a form of manipulation with greed. Hey, if I can enslave a people and get myself free labor, and make myself rich, I don't mind uh, calling these people less than me. If that's what it takes, you know, you know the people to think and they have lo loved ones and they have little ones and they care for the little ones like you. They have all the senses you have, but for some reason you've gone along with a lie and that's what a lot of our founding fathers and the people that Britain did, they just adopted a lie that says African men are less than white men. Now, before I go any further than this, I love my white brothers and sisters. I just love the nations. My wife and I love the nations, but I just want to share this point so that you understand how witchcraft works. What witchcraft did to change the nature when it came to the black man, I'm going to make that man less in the eyes of my neighbor, which will give me the fuel to be able to enslave him because he's nothing. He's just a few drops up above a dog. So, you know, making him a slave, it should be easy to do now. After all, you know, he's less of a person. Now I can sleep with them and get them pregnant and all that, but they're still less of a person. Now, that's interesting. Uh, you can sleep with a person that's only half a person. That's part animal. But I want you to know, this is how the spirit of witchcraft work. And what's the deal? Greed. I want free labor and, or, or I want a bedfellow. I want a bed partner. Whatever it is that you want your slave to do, I got to make you less of a person first. I got to bring oppression upon you. And, and this has happened. And it filtrated into the early part of our nation. And it, it damaged our nation. 
there are people in the black race still angry because of slavery. There are people in the black race to this day that don't trust a Caucasian person no more than they can throw them because of this foundation. And I want to say to those of you who are black, if you've had this sort of thought and you might have reason for it, I want you by the grace of God to forgive your white brother, to give your, forgive your white neighbor for our, for our nation's history, or if you've been hurt by uh, your white counterpart or white brother. We as believers have to set the standard of love and forgiveness and acceptance. We have to, but not continue to carry on the bitterness. Okay, yes, we're free. And yes, things have changed in our nation. But that bitter root and said, your race enslaved me. It's time now to give that up. It's time to come out of that. You have the right to maintain that. But think about how much better it would be between you and your white brother or sister or your white counterpart if you didn't have that. But anyway, getting back to witchcraft. So this happens all the time. I'm going to change the rules of engagement. I'm going to change the foundation so that it seems justified Slavery is justified because this person is not even a full human being. What was that law called, that old law in the colonial days, the three-fifths law? You can't count your slave man for man because a slave is not a whole man. You guys remember your American history? You remember that? That was a lie. It was a bold-faced lie. But still, people went for it. After all, money was involved. Prosperity is everything. You know, everything is a buck. And so I'm going to take this human being and make them a slave. And I'm going to pass laws to make it seem like it's righteous. You know, I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm just letting you know that this is how witchcraft works. Witchcraft can do it in a positive way. It can do it in a negative way. Um, this is another thing that happens now. Sexuality. Do people think it's okay for you to have premarital sex? Even though the Bible comes against premarital sex, even though the Bible denounces fornication, even though I could give you so many scriptures that say, that say that you should not commit fornication or adultery, okay? Even though I could give you all those scriptures, the today's social setting, today's media, and today's culture has basically said fornication is expected. Go out and get your contraceptives and have a good time because everybody's going to do it. But it's a lie. It's a lie of witchcraft to manipulate the culture so that we will enter into a covenant-breaking lifestyle. When a man marries a woman, he is to do three things. Listen to me, men. Listen to me. In the Genesis account, God did three things before he brought that woman. He gave that man a calling. He gave that man a home. And he gave that man a job before that woman was brought to him. You need to understand that you don't have sex with a young woman before you pay the price for her. And the way God did it in the, in, in the Bible was that man needs to have a purpose. That man needs to have a home. That man needs to have a job before he has the right to sex that woman. Now, I'm telling you right now, that's kind of tough language, but I'm not trying to hold back here. I'm saying to you, we need to give up our rebellion. And stop saying yes to this propaganda that's going around the, 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 the media today and going around our culture today. Pop culture says fornication is glorious. Fornication will send you to hell if you don't repent of it. God says you are not to do it. He says you are not to commit adultery. Under the Old Testament, adultery was punishable by death. But in the Christian sense, it kills your spirit. You can't love God and break your covenant with your wife and have a relationship with another woman. You are being unfaithful, man. God says that these people, you know, God says that liars will have their part in the lake of fire and you want to commit adultery on top of a lie? Oh, come on. But look, the culture has changed. When I came up, James Bond was the man because he could just have fornication with four, five, six, seven, eight girls in one movie. So I'm going to glorify fornication and treat 
premarital sex like it's the most wonderful thing, Break, breaking God's covenant. And, and everybody's going hip, hip, hooray. I think Lord, we're going to hit and break all movie records today. I'm letting you know right now that the system that is in place right now is anti-Christ, anti-Bible. And you have to understand that when I'm preaching like this, I know that so a lot of people are not going to like what I have to say. But you need to hear what I have to say. Because it's what God says in his word. And God's word was here long before I was even thought of. Let me tell you something. I know I said some tough things, but it's because Jesus loves you and he wants to tell you the truth. Love ain't going to lie to you. So some of you need to, need to understand that witchcraft has an agenda. And that agenda is to manipulate you, to manipulate your soul until you become captive of the devil and you end up in the devil's hell that you never had to be when there was a God that loved you and a God that made you and have a per and has a perfect design for you. Well, anyway, time slipped away from me. All right, we're still going to be completing the series of witchcraft and we'll be hitting different angles of it. Um, and uh, pray for me and my wife because this is not an easy area to uh, preach on. All right, God bless you. I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye.